Maybe the night before your surgery took place. Or there's a day when your tightly wound world just came unraveled. And maybe you felt like the psalmist at times who wrote these words. How long, Lord? Listen to these words. How long, O Lord, will you forget me? Forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Life isn't fair. Just look into the Bible. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. Job lost everything in a single day. John the Baptist was executed for no good reason. The apostles were beaten and tortured for preaching the gospel. Listen to the words of the apostle Paul to the, to the church at Corinth. He said, five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the moon. I've been move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. Paul had been in danger. Anyone who says that the Christian life is a bed of roses really aren't telling you the truth. The fact is life isn't real fair and it's, but, and, and, and it, the fact that life isn't fair is still really real for people of faith. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Yeah, life isn't fair. Jesus himself, he came into this world and was rejected by the very people that he came to save. Jesus was given a mockery of a trial and he was sentenced to death and he was beaten and scourged and Roman soldiers mocked him and beat him some more and drove a crown of thorns into his scalp. He was forced to carry his own, own cross through a leering and jeering mob to a, to the place where they were going to put him to death and he was nailed to a cross and he died in a garbage dump. Life isn't fair. On the third day, though, the stone rolled away from the tomb and Jesus was raised from the dead and he lives now with his Father in heaven to show us a simple truth. That life isn't fair, but God is good. Five things to remember about trials. I hope this helps us today. Trials are a short-term reality. I think we have a slide up there for some of that. I think Um, the difficulties that we face in life are short-term realities because our existence is not mortal, but it's eternal. You see, this life is not the end, but it is a stepping stone for, for all of eternity. Number two, trials can lead us to a greater blessing and so scripture references are going to be up there and maybe you can do your own homework to hear them blessed is the man who who perseveres under trials because when he has stood the test he will receive a crown of life that God has promised to those who love him See, standing up for God in the midst of life's heartaches and heartbreaks leads us to great rewards. James says that those who persevere will gain a crown of life. A third thing, trials give us a proper perspective. If this life were nothing but good, there'd be no desire, right, for us to see the kingdom of God. We would feel that we were living in it. Paul tells us that this life may be faded away, but eternity is drawing ever closer each day. Each day we live, we get closer to the day when we'll stand before Jesus. And here's something that I I know for a fact, I've experienced this, that trials can help us experience God's presence. 
God gives us his divine presence in the midst of trials and difficulties to send us just a clear, clear message that he's there and he understands it, that he's lived it. So when we go through these hard times, God just assures us we can never go through them alone because he will always be there. One day when we'll reach that far shore of heaven and see, and, and we see Jesus face to face, what a day that'll be. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I shall see. What a day, glorious day that'll be. Every difficult and trial will simply melt away in the light of eternity. See, because we're not really living for today. We're living in today, but we're not living for today. We're living for the day that we'll stand before Jesus. So just for a couple more moments, I want to give us just a, a few lessons about trials. In Romans 8.28, we read that God is at work in everything, even when it seems like he's not. Paul wrote, And we know that all thi- in all things God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. So look again at those words. Think about those words again. Notice what Paul does not say. Paul does not say that God is at work in a few things. He doesn't say that God is at work at several things. He doesn't even say that God is in work at many things. He says God is at work in all things. There's absolutely nothing that escapes his attention or comes without his divine care or concern. See, second thing is that God gives us strength in every situation. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will, be a, you will abound in every good work. God knows our every need, and he graciously supplies everything that we need to make it through the trials of this life. You know, with God, there's no situation that's too, too hard. There's no time when he forgets about us. There's no problem too great that is grace. Remember, we've been talking about grace cannot help us through. Because Jesus has defeated the power of trials. Jesus says in John 16, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you'll have trouble. But Jesus says, take heart because he has overcome the world. See, with Jesus, with Jesus in our lives, we're more than overcomers. We're children of the King. Jesus gives us security in a very insecure world. He's the one who helps us overcome the the troubles of the world. See, Jesus gives us his calm assurance. Remember that Fanny Crosby song, Blessed Assurance? Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. That's Jesus. She's talking about Jesus giving us a calm assurance that even though the world is swirling around us in chaos, God's grace is here for you and for me. There's nothing that ever happens that takes place in this world that Jesus hasn't overcome. And we are his children, and so we're more than overcomers. One day, loved ones, the blessed assurance is is that one day the trials and the tribulations and the chaos of life are just going to fade away. They're going to be removed. Now, Scripture says, the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things have gone away. So, what does this all mean? Well, uh, perhaps maybe uh, these words. um, Will help us. 
Not long ago, there lived an old bedridden saint, a Christian lady, or and a Christian lady who visited her found her always very cheerful. Well, this visitor lady, uh, this visitor had a lady friend of wealth who constantly looked on the dark side of things and always and was always cast down, although she was a Christian. She thought it would do this lady good to see this bedridden saint, so she took her down to the house. And she lived up in the fifth story of an apartment building, the fifth floor of an apartment building. And when they got to the first story, the lady drew, drew up her dress and said, man, this place is dark and it's filthy, but it's better higher up, said her friend. Well, then they got to the, to the next story, and, and it was no better. And the lady complained again, but her friend replied, It's okay. It's better up there. And then the third floor, on the third floor, it seemed worse, and the lady kept complaining, and her friend kept saying, But it's better up there. It's getting better up there. And at last, they got to the fifth floor, and when they went into the sick room, there was nice carpet on the floor, and there were flowering plants in the window, and a little bird was singing. And there they found this bedridden saint, one of those saints whom God is polishing for his own temple. And just beaming with joy, the lady said to her, it must be very hard for you to lie there. And she smiled and said, well, it's better up there. Yeah. And if things go against us, friend, we just need to remember that it's better up there. That's from a little short story by Dwight L. Moody. So today, if your experience of trial that's overwhelming, if you just can't seem to pull yourself out of it, you know what? It's better up there. Come and just find strength in Jesus Christ, your Lord. Amen? Amen. It's better up there. Worship team, come. Let's worship the Lord one more time this morning. You know, I have a friend who uh, has seven children, and she... Uh, experiences often her children coming to her and saying, but that's not fair. And she always says, fair is what you pay on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Amen. Good, good, good stuff.
Amen. Receive this blessing this morning, if you would. The Lord bless you and keep you. The, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you rest. Go in his grace and his mercy. You are dismissed.